can have made the grey hen flutter so. They say that now the land is famine struck. The graves are walking. Now what can the hen have heard? And that is not the worst. At Tubervanach, a woman met a man with ears spread out. And they moved up and down like a bat's wing. What can have kept your father all this while? Three nights ago, at Caricora's churchyard, a herdsman met a man who had no mouth, nor eyes, nor ears, his face a wall of flesh. He saw him plainly by the light of the moon. Look out and tell me if your father's coming. Mother. What is it? The bush beyond. There are two birds. If you can call them birds. I could not see them rightly for the leaves, but they have the shape and colour of horned owls. And I'm half certain they have a human face. Mother of God, defend us! They're looking at me. What is the good of praying, Father says? God and the Mother of God have dropped asleep. What do they care, he says? Though the whole land squeal like a rabbit under a weasel's tooth. You'll bring misfortune with your blasphemies upon your father or yourself or me. Would God that he were home. Ah, there he is. Oh. What was it kept you in the wood? You know I cannot get all sorts of accidents out of my mind till you are home again. I am in no mood to listen to your clatter. And though I tramped the woods for half a day, I've taken nothing. For the very rats, badgers, and hedgehogs seem to have died of drought, and there was scarce a wind in the parched leaves. You said that you would bring us food or money. What's in the house? A bit of mouldy bread. There's flour enough to make another loaf. And when that's gone? There is a hen in the coop. And the last penny gone. When the hen's gone, what can we do but live on sorrel and dock and dandelion and till our mouths are green. God that to this hour has found bit and sup will cater for us still. Ha! His kitchen's bare. There were five doors that I looked through this day and saw the dead and not a soul to wake them. Maybe he'd have us die because he knows when the ear is stopped and when the eye is stopped that every wicked sight is hid from the eye and all fool talk from the ear. <laughs> Who's passing there? And I'm mocking us with music. A young man plays it. And there's an old woman and a lady with him. What is the trouble of the poor to her? Nothing at all, or a harsh, radishy sauce for the day's meat. God's pity on the rich. Had we been through as many doors and seen the dishes standing on the polished wood in the wax candlelight, we'd be as hard. And there's the needle's eye at the end of all. My curse upon the rich. They're coming here. Then down upon that stool, down quick, I say, and call up a way face and a whining voice, and then let your head be bowed upon your knees. But time to put the place to rights. God save all here. There is a certain house, an old grey castle with a kitchen garden, a cider orchard and a plot for flowers. Somewhere among these woods. We know it, lady. A place that's set among impassable walls. As though a world's trouble could not find it out. It may be that we are that trouble. For we, although we've wandered in the wood this hour, have lost it too. Yet I should know my way. For I lived all my childhood in that house. Then you are Countess Kathleen. And this woman, Una, my nurse, should have remembered it. We were happy for a long time there. The paths are overgrown with thickets now, or else some change has come upon my sight. And this young man, that should have known the woods, because we met him on their border but now, wandering and singing like a wave of the sea, is so wrapped up in dreams of terrors to come that he can give no help. You have still some way. But I can put you on the trodden path your servants take when they are marketing. But first, sit down and rest yourself a while. 
For my old father served your father's lady longer than books can tell. And it were strange if you and yours should not be welcome here. And it were stranger still were I ungrateful for such kind welcome. But I must be gone, for the night's gathering in. It's a long while since I set eyes on bread or on what buys it. So you are starving, even in this wood, where I had thought I would find nothing changed. But that's a dream. The old worm of the world can eat its way into what place it pleases. Beautiful lady, give me something too. I fell but now, being weak with hunger and thirst, and lay upon the threshold like a log. I gave her all, and that was all I had. But look, my purse is empty. I have passed by starving men and women all this day, and they have had the rest. But take the purse. The silver clasps on it may be worth a trifle. And if you will come tomorrow to my house, you shall have twice the sum. What? Music? Music? Ah, uh, do not blame the finger on the string. The doctors bid me fly the unlucky times and find distraction for my thoughts. Or else, pine to my grave. I have said nothing, lady. Why should the likes of us complain? Have done. Sarah's that she's but read of in a book way on her mind as if they had been her own. Were I but crazy for love's sake, I know would measure out his length. I know the heads that I should break, for crazy men have double strength. I know all's out to leave or take, who mocks at music, mocks at love. Were I but crazy for love's sake, no need to pick and choose. Enough! I know the heads that I should break. Shut to the door before the night has fallen. For who can say what walks or in what shape some devilish creature flies in the air? But now two grey horned owls hooted above our heads. So that fool's gone. He's seen the horned owls too. There's no good looking owls. But it may be that the ill look is to fall upon his head. I heard say there's something that appears like a white bird, a, a pigeon, or, or a seagull, or the like. But if you hit it with a stone or a stick, it clangs as though it had been made of brass. And then if you dig down where it was scratching, you'll find a crock of gold. But dream of gold for three nights running, and there's always gold. Huh? you might be starved before you've dug it out. But maybe, if you called, something would come. They have been seen of late. Is it call devils? Call devils from the wood? Call them in here? So you'd stand up against me, and you'd say who or what I am to welcome here? That's to show you who's master. Call them in. God help us all. Pray if you have a mind to. It's little that the sleepy ears above care for your words. Or I'll call what I please. There's many a one they say had money from them. Whatever you are that walk the wood at night, so be it, that you have not shouldered up out of the grave. For I'll have nothing human, and have free hands, a friendly trick of speech. I welcome you. Come in, sit beside the fire. What matter if your head's below your arms, or you have a horse's tail to whip your flank? Feathers instead of hair, that's all but nothing. Come, share what bread and meat is in the house, and stretch your heels and warm them in the ashes, and after that, let's share and share alike, and curse all men and women. Come in, come in. What? Is there no one there? And yet they say, they are as common as grass, and ride even upon the book in the priest's hand. You 
never speak to them. No, 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 you. It was you that called them. Ah. I'd make so bold, if you would pardon it, to ask if there's a thing you'd have of us. Although we are but poor people, if there is, why, if there is, we've travelled a long road. For we are merchants that must tramp the world. And now we look for supper and a fire, and a safe corner to count money in. I thought you were, but that's no matter now. There's been words between my wife and me because I said I would be master here, and ask in what I pleased or who I pleased, and so, but that is nothing to the point, because it's certain that you are but merchants. We travel for the master of all merchants. You stir yourself, go kill and draw the fowl while Tig and I lay out the plates and make a better fire. I will not cook for you. Not cook? Not cook? Oh, do not be angry. She wants to pay me back because I struck her in the argument. But she'll get sense again. Since the dearth came, we rattle one on another as though we were knives thrown into a basket to be cleaned. I will not cook for you because I know in what unlucky shape you sat but now. Outside this door. It's this, your honours. Because of some wild words my father said. She thinks that you are not of those who cast a shadow. I said I'd make the devils of the wood welcome if they'd mind to eat and drink. But it is certain that you are men like us. It's strange that she should think we cast no shadow. For there is nothing on the ridge of the world that's more substantial than the merchants are that buy and sell you. If you are not demons, and seeing what great wealth is spread out there, give food or money to the starving poor. If we knew how to find deserving poor, we'd do our share. But seek them patiently. We know the evils of mere charity. Those scruples may be fit a common time. I had thought there was a pushing to and fro at times like this that overset the scale and trampled measure down. But if already we thought of a more prudent way than that. If each one brings a bit of merchandise, we'll give him such a price he's never dreamt of. Where shall the starving come at merchandise? We will ask nothing but what all men have. Their swine and cattle, fields and implements are sold and gone. They have not sold all yet. For there's a vaporous thing that may be nothing. But that's the buyer's risk. A second self. They call him mortal for a story's sake. They come to buy our souls. I'll barter mine. Why should we starve for what may be but nothing? Tig and shameless. What can it be but nothing? What has God poured out of his bag but famine? Satan gives money. Yet no thunder stars. There is a heap for each. You've but to cry aloud at every crossroads, at every house door, that we buy men's souls and give so good a price that all may live in mirth and comfort till the famine's done, because we are Christian men. Come, let's away. I shall keep running till I've earned the price. Stop! You must have proof behind the words. So here's your entertainment on the road. Live as you please. Our master's generous. Destroyers of souls, God will destroy you quickly. You shall at last dry like dry leaves and hang nailed like dead vermin to the doors of God. Curse to your fill, for saints will have their dreams. Though we're but vermin that our master sent to overrun the world, he at the end shall pull apart the pale ribs of the moon and quench the stars in the ancestral night. God is all-powerful. Pray. You shall need him. You shall eat duck and grass and dandelion till that low threshold there becomes a wall. And when your hands can scarcely drag your body, we shall be near you. Our faces go unscratched. Ring the neck 
of that fowl. Scatter the flour and look if there's bread upon the shelves. We'll turn the fowl upon the spit and roast it and eat the supper we were bidden to. Now that the house is quiet, praise our master and stretch and warm our heels among the ashes. <laughs> Surely this leafy corner, where one smells the wild bee's honey, has a story too. There is the house at last. A man, they say, loved Maeve, the queen of all the invisible host, and died of his love nine centuries ago. And now, when the moon's riding at the full, she leaves her dancers lonely and lies there upon that level place, and for three days stretches and sighs and wets her long pale cheeks. So she loves truly? No, but wets her cheeks, lady, because she has forgot his name. She'd sleep that trouble away, though it must be a heavy trouble to forget his name. If she had better sense. Your own house, lady? She sleeps high up on wintry Nocknare in an old cairn of stones, while her poor women must lie and jog in the wave if they would sleep, being waterborne. Yet if she cry their names, they run up on the land and dance in the moon till they are giddy and would love as men do and be as patient and as pitiful. But there is nothing that will stop in their heads. They have such poor memories, though they weep for it. Oh, yes, they weep. That's when the moon is full. Is it because they have short memories? They live so long? What's memory but the ash that chokes our fires that have begun to sink? And they've a dizzy, everlasting fire. There is your own house, lady. Why, that's true. And we'd have passed it without noticing. A curse upon it for a meddlesome house. Had it but stayed away, I should have known what Queen Maeve thinks on when the moon is pinched. And whether now, as in the old days, the dancers set their brief love on men. Rest on my arm. These are no thoughts for any Christian ear. I am younger. She would be too heavy for you. <laughs> this hollow box remembers every foot that danced upon the level grass of the world and will tell secrets if I whisper to it. Lift up the white knee. Hear what they sing. Those young dancers that in a ring raved but now of the hearts that broke long, long ago for their sake. New friends are sweet. But the dance changes. Lift up the gown. All that sorrow is trodden down. Oh, the empty rattle pate. Lean on this arm that I can tell you is a christened arm. Not like some, if we are to judge by speech. Oh, but as you please. It is time I was forgot. Maybe it is not on this arm you slumbered when you were as helpless as a worm. Stay with me till we come to your own house. When I am rested, I will need no help. I thought to have kept her from remembering the evil of the time for full ten minutes. But now, when seven are out, you come between. Oh, talk on. What does it matter what you say? For you have not been christened. Old woman, old woman. You robbed her of three minutes' peace of mind. And though you live into a hundred years and wash the feet of beggars and give alms and crime crow Patrick, you shall not be pardoned. How does a man who never was baptized know what heaven pardons? You're a sinful woman. Oh, I care no more than if a pig had grunted. Lady, lady, I, I'm not to blame, for I locked the gate. The forester's to blame. The men climbed in at the east corner where the elm tree is. I do not understand you. Who has climbed? Then God be thanked, for I'm the first to tell you. I was afraid some others of the servants, though I'd been on the watch, had been the first, and mixed up truth and lies, your ladyship. Has some misfortune happened? Yes, indeed. The forester that let the branches lie against the walls to blame for everything. For, for that is how the rogues got into the garden. I thought to have escaped misfortune here. Has anyone been killed? Oh, no, no, not killed. They have stolen half a cartload of green cabbage. But maybe they were starving. Oh, that is certain. To rob or starve, that was the choice they had. A learned theologian has laid down that starving men may take what's necessary 
and yet be sinless. Sinless and a thief? Oh, there should be broken bottles on the wall. And if it be a sin, while faith's unbroken, God cannot help but pardon. There is no soul but it's unlike all others in the world, nor one but lifts a strangeness to God's love till that's grown infinite, and therefore none whose loss were less than irremediable, although it were the wickedest in the world. Money, oh, money, money! What do you run for? Pull off your cap. Do you not see who's here? I, I cannot wait. I'm running to the world with the best news that has been brought it for a thousand years. Then get your breath and speak. Oh, if you'd my news, you'd run as fast and be as out of breath. Such news, we shall be carried on men's shoulders. There's something every man has carried with him and thought no more about it than if it were a mouthful of wind, and now it's grown a marketable thing. And yet it seems as useless as the paring of one's nails. <laughs> what sets me laughing when I think of it is that a rogue who's laying in lousy straw, if he but sell it, may set up his own coach. There are two gentlemen who buy men's souls. Oh, God. And maybe there's no soul at all. They're drunk or mad. Look at the price they give. Go cry it all about the world, kid. Money for souls. Good money for the soul. Give twice and thrice and twenty times their money and get your souls again. I will pay all. Or not we, not we. For souls, if they be souls, but keep the flesh out of its merriment, I shall be drunk and merry. Come, let's away. But there's a world to come. And if there is, I'd rather thrust myself into the hands that can pay money down than to the hands that have but shaken famine from the bag. There's money for a soul. Sweet yellow money. There's money for men's souls. Good money. Money. Go call them here again. Bring them by force. Beseech them. Bribe. Do anything you like. And you two follow. Add your prayers to his. Steward, you know the secrets of my house. How much have I? A hundred kegs of gold. How much have I in castles? As much more. How much have I in pastures? As much more. How much have I in forests? As much more. Keeping this house alone, sell all I have. Go barter where you please, but come again with herds of cattle and with ships of meal. God's blessing light upon your ladyship. You will have saved the land. Make no delay. They have not come. Alil, speak quickly. One drew his knife and said that he would kill the man or woman that stopped his way. And when I would have stopped him, he made this stroke at me. But it is nothing. You shall be tended. From this day forever, I'll have no joy or sorrow of my own. Their eyes shone like the eyes of birds of prey. Come, follow me, for the earth burns my feet till I have changed my house to such a refuge that the old and ailing and all weak of heart may escape from beak and claw. All, all shall come till the walls burst and the roof fall on us. From this day out, I have nothing of my own. She has found something now to put her hand to. And you and I are of no more account than flies upon a window pane in the winter. Mm -hmm.